Hello, good day to everybody who's studying with us, Perkei Avot, parents and kids, youth. Let's jump right in to the third and fourth Mishnayot of Perak Aleph of Perkei Avot. And here we have a very interesting question about what motivates us. What motivates us to do what we do as Ovde Hashem? And how do we motivate our children to do the right thing? So we learn in this Mishnah, Mishnah Gimel, Antigonus Ish Socho Kibel Mishimona Tzadik. Antigonus learned from Shimona Tzadik and teaches, Huayaomer al Tihiyu Ke'avadim Hamisham Shin Etarav Al Menat Gabel Pras. Don't be like a servant who serves his master in order to receive a reward. Elahevu Ke'avadim Hamisham Shim Etarav Shelo Al Menat Gabel Pras. Rather, be like a servant who does not expect any reward. What we're talking about here is our relationship with Hashem. And the idea is that we are supposed to serve God, not because we're going to receive some reward. Olam haba, yimot hamashiach, another religion's 72 versions in heaven. But rather because we've been commanded to follow Hashem, to follow His ways and to love Him, avat Hashem. And we're supposed to be religiously motivated and not because of any reward that we were going to receive. Or it could be also punishment in the other direction. And he concludes, You should also have fear of God. So balance fear of God with love of God. And here we have a fundamental question. How do we educate our children to do the right thing? Are we telling them, hey, if you go to shul, I'll give you candy. If you uh, help clean up, I'll give you a snack and let you watch TV. Are we teaching them to do things because they're inherently the right thing to do or because we want them, we motivate them with reward and punishment? What are the disadvantages and advantages of each of these approaches? What happens when a person matures and they're still doing things because of the reward that they might receive for doing these things? So this is a fundamental educational question which we have to think about as parents and also talk about with our children, to teach them to do things because they're inherently valuable and not just because uh, of a reward they might receive in the short term. And now we move on to Mishnah Dalet. Yossi ben Yo'ezer ish tzereida v'yossi ben Yochanan ish Yerushalayim kiblu mehem. They both taught these two rabbis. Yossi ben Yo'ezer taught, Yehi beitcha beit va'ad l'chachamim. Your home should be open to wisdom. It should be a, a place where scholars gather, where you have shirim going on and you have talks and you have uh, wisdom is being shared on a regular basis. You should sit at the, at the stool, at the feet of scholars and learn from their wisdom and be connected to them and thirst for knowledge. And finally, is teaching us that you should thirst for knowledge of Torah, of wisdom. Now the formulation is interesting. It doesn't say you should thirst kitsame like a thirsty person. A thirsty person, they're quenching something. They're very thirsty. They drink. They no longer feel thirsty. They stop drinking. Heve shote bitsame at divrehem. Rav Chaim of Elijah explains that we should always be thirsting for knowledge. Our desire to learn more, to grow to understand more should never stop. We always need to grow no matter how old we are, no matter what station of life we are in. And so the question here is, how do we create a home where knowledge, wisdom is constantly uh, being uh, being spoken about and shared? And how do we demonstrate a real quenching for knowledge, both as, 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 as examples, as parents and as educators? And also, how do we instill this? in our children. So two questions to think about uh, with, our, with our children. How, but ultimately, how do we make, how do we encourage our children 